I'm Dr. Karen with Embrace Life Ohm and Mother Core, and in today's video I'm going to talk about treating cancer with melatonin and other forms of circadian rhythm entrainment. This video is part of our continuing series on light and your health, and to understand it better, we recommend first watching part one, the basics, and part four on breast cancer. A number of laboratory experiments has shown that melatonin is a potent cancer inhibitor. It slows cancer growth and it stops cancer from spreading. This is especially true for cancers that are hormone sensitive, such as breast, prostate, endometrial, and ovarian. But melatonin has lots of different ways that it affects cancer, and effects against other cancers have also been demonstrated in the laboratory. There's one lead researcher in Italy, Lissoni, and several lead researchers in China who have done a number of clinical experiments with people giving them melatonin to treat cancer. In these experiments, half the patients are randomized to receive chemotherapy and melatonin, while the other half receive chemotherapy alone. Unfortunately, the half receiving chemotherapy alone did not receive a placebo, so it would be beneficial to do these studies again in a correct placebo double-blinded method. However, given what we have, the results using melatonin were nothing short of astounding, and the cancers for which the melatonin was effective included lung, breast, liver, gastrointestinal tract, head and neck, and brain glioblastoma. In meta-analysis of all of the clinical trials in which patients were given melatonin in pill form to treat their cancer, for every one patient who went into remission on chemotherapy alone, there were two patients who went into complete remission using chemotherapy plus melatonin. Likewise, for every one patient who survived for one year on chemotherapy alone, there were two patients who survived for one year combining chemotherapy and melatonin. In addition to overall survival, the patients taking melatonin experienced a significant decrease in the side effects from chemotherapy. For example, for every 10 patients on chemotherapy who experienced thrombocytopenia, only one patient experienced this who was also taking melatonin. For every 8 patients on chemotherapy who had neurotoxicity, only one patient experienced this who was also on melatonin. And for every 3 patients on chemotherapy who experienced fatigue, there was only one patient in the melatonin group who complained of this symptom. It is important to note that in these clinical trials, they use 10 to 20 milligrams of melatonin per day. This is a lot more than the usual dosage for jet lag or insomnia, which is usually closer to 1.5 to 5 milligrams. So if you're doing this at home, it's probably a good idea to start with a lower dosage, and if that works for you, stay there, because we know that taking too much melatonin can cause too much melatonin to be in your bloodstream during the day, when it can cause problems for your health. So you really want the melatonin to be high in your bloodstream at night. It's also important that studies of melatonin supplements have found that some of them contain either more or less melatonin than is stated on the bottle. So if you're taking melatonin in pill form, try to look for a brand that is USP certified or ask a doctor for a brand that they recommend. If you can get away from the pills altogether though, and sufficiently raise your melatonin through natural means, that will be the healthiest way for your body. Unfortunately, undergoing chemotherapy to treat cancer can have the opposite effect on your body of increasing your melatonin naturally. Women with breast cancer have disordered circadian rhythm and insomnia upon diagnosis, but both of these things get worse after four rounds of chemotherapy treatment. One research group tried to counteract this with natural methods. They gave women on chemotherapy 30 minutes of bright light exposure every morning. Now you can get this bright light either by going out in the sunlight or by getting a sun lamp, the same kind of lamp that you would use to treat seasonal affective disorder. Now this bright light exposure in the morning will increase your melatonin production at night. And the researchers found that the woman getting these bright lights did a lot better on the chemotherapy and were able to recover their circadian rhythm and their sleep ability right after the chemotherapy ended. There was also a research group working with patients who were undergoing surgery for esophageal cancer. 
Some of these patients were exposed to bright light in the morning of 5,000 lux after their surgery. The patients who were exposed to bright morning light had less delirium after their surgery, which is very important because delirium after surgery can lead to permanent neurological deficits. And the patients who were exposed to the bright light were able to get up and walk two days earlier than the other patients. In another research study, patients undergoing chemotherapy were asked to soak their feet in a hot foot bath for 20 minutes before going to bed. The hot foot bath causes dilation in the blood vessels in the feet, which is one of the things that melatonin does naturally at nighttime. These patients fell to sleep much easier and were able to maintain their circadian rhythm and get through chemotherapy treatment easier than the patients who did not have the hot foot baths. Although I couldn't find any clinical trials, since we know that exposure to artificial light at night suppresses melatonin production, keeping cancer patients out of this light should improve their treatment outcome. To find out how to keep light exposure at night sufficiently low, please part, watch part one of our series, The Basics, and part two of our series on light bulbs. It is also known that there are certain foods that you can eat that will increase your natural melatonin levels. So please also watch our accompanying video on the foods that you can eat to increase your melatonin. Thank you so much for watching today.